So the very first part that we're gonna go ahead and look at is the actual tea light that can be included in kits inside of Teleport. And this is great for its very basic artisanal designs, that kind of thing. It has a nice little bit of glow, a little bit of flicker to it so that it emulates a standard flame. And if you place it inside any side of its translucent part, you're able to kind of see its light. And of course it'd be better if it was darker here today right now. But this component is really easy to work with. It is the standard of a standard candle tea light, but of course is a lot safer. So you're looking at 37 millimeters to the side there. There. And then, of course, right here is 17.5, but with the feet on it included and making room for the switch, you actually have, let me hit it there, right there, actually have 19.64, which means you mainly just want to go for 20. The flame itself is 18 tall, and that should pretty much cover it. So this is a really good thing to include if you're making desk center designs, lights in and of themselves that can be used all over the place, and whatever else that you might want a candle. Uh, during Halloween, these are really popular. People do do candelabras or pumpkin insert accessories, that kind of thing. That's what this piece is best for. The other standard component that we include is this thumb uh, one quarter by 20 screw, which is really popular for photography accessories. This part, of course, is a standard size thread that can be used with tripods and that kind of thing to mount cameras. 18 and a half tall, basically 19. If you're looking for the width of it all right there, you can just see that, that those thumbs are 32 to the side and just four, three and a half, four across with the center diameter being 10. And of course the top stock is eight and a half, nine tall. But yes, this is mainly used for photography. You can put this in the bottom of a tripod. You can screw into the bottom of any sort of standard camera. So these are used as nice little uh, setting screws. If you have a piece of hardware or a piece of woodworking equipment where you're building in a clamp or some other sort of fastening feature, this is what this screw is intended for. The top is cast, but is coated with plastic so that you have good grip right there. And they are a standard screw beyond that. Staying inside the theme of screws is our set of very simple M2 by 12 screws here that come in a very large bag because these are really easy to get lost inside of a box. So we put them in much larger bag than is really necessary. That way they can't fall to the bottom or fall out of the box when people are unpacking stuff. It's really easy to get caught. But of course it's a set of full 10. There's normal cap head screw. These are good for fastening very small parts or being used inside of kits and that sort of thing. So just a general fastener there. And of course, over time, we will continue to expand the selection of screws inside of Teleport, but this is a good baseline to get started doing whatever you need to do. So generally a set of 10 of these will cover most things you need to do. If you need to, you can include multiple sets with any sort of Teleport match when you're setting it up inside of the app there. Next up, you have the four pack of eight by two neodymium magnets. These magnets, of course, are great for if you're doing parts and pieces uh, such as cosplay accessories that need to snap together, small toys, uh, some woodworking accessories, that kind of thing. They're, of course, very strong, very satisfying. And if you need more strength, the great thing about these is that you can just go ahead and add more of them to the kit. And instead of having to have a single particular sort of size, you can just stack up two of them inside of the assembly for the user there. Now this is a really easy set of uh, pieces that is really useful for whenever you need to have something be assembled. We will expand these a little bit more to have some more higher strength, wider diameter sort of ones. But the main trick I would always say with these is to make sure to design insert side slots for these so that the magnets go into the side of the part rather than needing to be set in. Obviously we do not put the magnets inside of the part during printing. These are just included in the box as an ex additional piece that your users can then insert to the part whenever they receive the pieces from Slant 3D. So these are a really good thing. You can put in multiple sets. Again, we put them in a large bag to make sure that people don't lose them inside of the package when it arrives. But these are really useful for cosplay, general sorts of toys, and functional parts inside of the shop or certain types of accessories. One of the more mundane but very useful types of pieces is the keychain. The keychain is just a standard sort of ball chain that you would see on most normal keychains. Uh, hook and loop right here, you can just put it back together again. So this is good for any sort of toys, widgets, uh, keychains that you might be producing. I can't get it connected right there. But this can be included in the kit. We put it in the big old baggie so it doesn't fall to the bottom of the box and get lost. We do not assemble it with the pieces because uh, we, that's just not part of the service quite yet. But you're able to include this with any sorts of toys that you might be having or sending along through Teleport there. And it's very quick and easy to add this in. 
though there is always the option to design these sorts of keychain loops into the actual 3D printed part itself so that they basically print in place with the piece. So this isn't always necessary, but if you have a design that does necessarily need these keychains, it can be included in there very quickly and easily. Next up, we have our standard adhesive rubber feet, which uh, come in sets of four. They are a full four millimeters tall and eight millimeters, seven millimeters to the side there, depending on how loosely or much I wanna squeeze them. But these are a fantastic piece because they peel right off of the sheet right here and then can be adhered to the bottom of whatever type of parts you want. Obviously, you generally wanna kind of design some sort of foot inside of there. They are clear, so they will blend with basically any color that you want, whether it be yellow, white, black, whatever it may be. And they do come in sets of four. If you have more feet than that, you can include more if you would like. And they come in our standard uh, three by six bag or four by six bag so that they don't fall to the bottom of the box and get lost because these tiny little pieces can always sort of disappear if they don't have something or attached to something fairly large. But once adhered, they stick pretty darn well and take a decent amount of effort to get off. But again, just design little feet and dents into the bottom of whatever your part is, and then they have a way to stay there. And these are an excellent addition to make sure that your part sits both level on the bed. If you use the trick of having three feet rather than four, it will automatically self-level always. And these are a great, great way to do that so that you can compensate for any sort of design problems or uh, inconsistencies in how the print might be designed. That's a really easy way to adjust that. But they also just add a lot of quality and make sure that the 3D printed parts don't mar up a surface or anything else. These feet are a great addition to any sort of that piece and can easily be included inside the teleport app. Next up is our standard suction cup. These come in packs of four inside of teleport, but you can see right here that you have the dimensions of 8.5 right there, the outer dimension of about 14, depending on how much you want to squeeze it. And that bump has a slot that is a two and a half, three deep and has a head that is about three and a half, three deep right there. Uh, this standard suction cup is really useful for things like in-shower organizers, bathroom accessories, kitchen accessories, sponge holders, organizers, that kind of thing. So you can include a set of these inside the part and then it can be snopped into a slot. Generally, the best way of designing these is to use a very simple sort of slot like this in the side of your piece. That way, this connector can just go ahead and slide right up into that slot right there and ride along inside of that groove with the rest of the part hanging down off of the edge of it. That's the best way to design these. Though if you are being clever, you can do a standard hole that this can just be pressed into and then be a one wayer to where it just sockets right into there and then never comes back out. That's another way of using these suction cups and designing for them, all those types of very simple things. So they can add a lot of value to your 3D printed product design. Next up, we have a part that would generally be quite non-standard inside of a 3D printing app. It is these small uh, bottles here, which are actually meant to add weight to your product. What you do is you can design this slot into the bottom of the product, and then when your user receives this, they can fill it up with water and then insert it into the bottom of the product so that now it is very heavy, but it does not add any cost in the shipping weight because it's very light. But this bottle, this organizer bottle right here, is 60 to the side and uh, about 63 to the top, from top to bottom there. So you can design a slot a little bit over of those dimensions and then it'll fall right into the bottom and then people can either glue it in or if you design with grip fins, you can just drop it right in. It is waterproof and has a seal in the top of this also so that people can actually fill it up cinch it tight and then it won't leak anywhere if you have any sort of water inside of that. But this is just a way to make your 3D prints heavy without needing to rely on high infill or making the part actually heavy inside of shipping where it would increase the cost of shipping quite substantially. So this is mainly for a nifty little trick. However, if you want to, you can also design this as a liner for different sorts of parts to where if you need a waterproof type of part, you can design a 3D printed housing or cover to this. And then you can create some really interesting organizers and jars and sets in that way. So it can be really useful for that kind of thing. Next up, we have our standard quartz clock kit. And this is really useful for creating, well, clocks. Clocks is a really great category to design products inside of because they're making a comeback, especially analog clocks lately. So we wanted to include a kit so that you can design the 3D printed hands and the 3D printed housings that this clock can fit into. It can work for both a desk side alarm clock or a wall mounted clock and that kind of thing. While it does include hands, which are designed mainly for a wall clock, uh, you can actually take these base designs and readjust them 
for the actual design itself. The main thing is this mechanism that has the uh, minute hand and the regular hand right there. The outer dimensions of it are 55.7 by uh, 55.5, so we're good to keep it square there. It does run off of a AAA battery right there, and of course this is how you set it right here. Um, the overall thickness of it right here is 16 and a half, but you have some tiny little feet over there to where it goes up to 17, but they can serve as finding features. Let's go ahead and pull out all of the, the hands and stuff inside of here. It can, can be a bit of a challenge to get them sorted out, but you have multiple different hands that come along with it to where you can include it all. This may vary because the clock manufacturing kits and manufacturers can be difficult to get wrangled, so sometimes we will have to evolve it a bit. But basically, this second hand would go onto the very tip and the other hands underneath it. So the assembly is quite simple. This one is the minute hand would go right there and so on and so forth down the line. I'm gonna try not to bend too much of the stuff right here. But again, the actual dimensions of the stock, which is really important if you wanna design 3D printed versions of these hands, right here at the top, you have the outer second hand at 3.65, and then the minute hand, or the hour hand, 5.46, and the interior there, just a tiny little stock, probably don't want to design a 3D printed part for this because you're dealing with about a half a millimeter of stock clearance inside of there and the actual interior diameter is 2.5. So you'd want to be focusing on the minute hand and the hour hand dimensions right there. The rest of this is a threaded area so you can actually cinch it into the 3D printed part so that this would come into the back and then there'd be a wall right here and then you would attach it to there because you don't really want to see this mechanism inside of the kit. But this allows you to build really beautiful 3D printed clocks. And we have an entire video talking about different ways of doing 3D printed clocks in the past. But this mechanism is just a really handy thing to add in to radically improve just what would otherwise be an inanimate block of plastic, turning it into an actual clock by placing it in something like this, those kind of things. It's a very simple way to create a really high value product. Now moving on to everyone's favorite is the actual light puff used inside of Teleport. The light plug is a USB powered plug with a single on off button there on the side. We ship it inside of the standard bag that everything else comes through. Here's a little known secret with this. If you want it to be a little bit brighter than what you want, you can generally break it in half here, just like this. And then you can remove that damping screen, that diffuser on the front. And this makes it much brighter because now you just have pure LEDs in the front. This can depend on what your actual application is. Some people want the diffuser, some people don't. But if you want just the pure light coming through whatever your 3D printed part is on top of there, you want to do this because it'll just make it that much brighter and be able to diffuse much better. Um, right now, what you do have to do is that it does not come with an actual plug. You do have to actually, um, the, the user does have to have a standard like phone charger, block uh, or wall wart or whatever it may be, but there is that standard light right there. The overall dimensions of it are fairly standard. You'll find these on a lot of standard lights. So eight and a quarter in that direction, and then an overall diameter of, coming in there, here we go, 59.5, uh, so basically 60. You always want to design about a half millimeter beyond what the dimensions of the thing you have are. Though to create a really robust design, you would actually probably do something like grip pins on this. And we recommend going and checking out that video of how to have this insert into a hole and have that hole always fit. That's always sort of the challenge with working with third party parts is making sure that they interface with the 3D printed part that you have. But if you design the part appropriately, it'll work with basically any of these. So let's go ahead and plug this in. There you are. It's a fairly warmer sort of a glow. We didn't want to go with a white light because for these lamps, we do want them to be a little bit lighter. Um, but you can see that it's just a very delightful little glow there on it all. And again, if you wanted to put the diffuser over the top of it, and I'm not going to put it back in there just for time, it gets a lot softer to where you can place it in the side of stuff, or you can make like an Iron Man hand, those kind of things. But it softens it up if you think it might be too harsh in the base of whatever your lamp might be. But generally, it's a very good glow, and it's a very comforting sort of a glow. And that is the standard puck light that can be included with any sort of 3D printed item inside of Teleport. All right, the next really popular product is our actual uh, MagSafe charging puck that you can get with included with any kit. Uh, a standard USB plug there on the end of it all, a one meter long cord on it. And then if we go ahead and spin this around, you have the outer, ah, stick into it. 
uh, outer dimensions of 56 and the overall thickness of five and a half right there. Um, these are great for charging any sort of iPhones and that kind of thing. They'll work fine for all of them. They don't do like power charging, but it's a very lightweight, very good sort of charger for that kind of thing to really upgrade a 3D printed part again. And again, just make sure that you're designing with appropriate tolerances in place or maybe designed for folks to have glue. Over time here in Teleport, we'll include other sort of adhesive patches and that kind of stuff that can be included with kits so that you don't have to rely on just the part grabbing onto it, which is a lot more robust than other options that exist out there. But that is the standard uh, MagSafe charger that can be included with any print inside a Teleport there. Last, but most certainly never gonna be the least, is the uh, walking uh, wind-up toy included inside of Teleport that you can make all sorts of awesome little walking uh, widgets with this guy. We're really excited about this one because it's not really a standard part, but it's a way to create really sort of interesting items. And I'll show you one of those here in a moment. But the overall dimensions for this has, it has a top core of 21, a bottom core of, uh, let's try to get in there, uh, 27, an overall height, of 34 and that ridge gap right there is four and from top to the top of that ridge is 27 and then the ridge itself right here you have two and a little bit more right there right there and then the length of the stock is 14. We have a negative of this on the site as well as a negative of most of the other pieces as well so that you can basically just insert it into an STL and use it and then if you just twist it up then this guy will just scurry right along wherever he happens to be going. We have uh, done demos of this in the future past where you can twist these guys up. I'm having a tough time getting at it with these gloves just like this but you can create these fun little walking toys in a number of different directions here. I can't really get it set up to where they wobble along and walk wherever they happen to be. But these are a great little way to create a toy that has never really been possible before. So you might, in this case, this guy is an egg basically for Easter and that kind of thing. You can make other little collectible monsters and really leverage how 3D printing can create new designs that are limited over time. This is a great toy set for something to expand beyond just widget toys and that kind of thing because you can make all sorts of little monsters for these guys.